Why are we talking about USC on an SEC podcast? No, not the one that resides in Columbia, but the one out west that schedules games with SEC opponents like Alabama, LSU, Georgia every few years, the one in Southern California. And no, this is not me taking a shot at Lincoln Riley, who's trying to run away from the competition against LSU in Las Vegas. This is looking at it from a grand scheme of things because if there are takes... And then there are egregious takes, and then there are just simply wrong opinions. And we can't allow people to have these type of takes. Colin Cowherd, I'm sorry, dude. What the hell do you mean get rid of a rivalry like Florida and Florida State? What the hell do you mean get rid of a rivalry like Notre Dame and USC? Because rivalries is what makes college football the beautiful sport that it is. So what's going on, SDC Unfiltered? It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video, hit the ring notification. That way you don't miss a single episode of SECU because we're talking college football leading up to week one and well throughout the chaotic 2024 season. Make sure that also, if you like this video, that you leave a comment down below. Go to our actual podcast form page. Leave a one-star review if you hate this type of content. Leave a five-star review if you love this type of content. Make sure that also you're following us on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. And to keep up with the number one content surrounding your favorite conference, make sure that you visit secunfiltered.com. This episode is brought to you by Roback. Use the promo code SECU for 20% off all joggers, polos, hoodies, shorts, and much, much more. Promo code SECU at Roback.com. Tell them the fine folks over at SEC Unfiltered set you. So, The entire point of this conversation, Colin Calvert had Bruce Feldman on his show, his national syndicated radio show, and started talking about USC playing a more rigorous schedule now that they're saying goodbye to the Pac-12, which, by the way, was at its peak last season, and now is going up against teams like Penn State and going up against teams like Ohio State and now Oregon, and you throw in Michigan, and he says, well, if I have to play this tough schedule and I'm not guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, I'm picking Notre Dame out. And then you go ahead and you say, because if here's the problem that everyone's going to take, you hear that take and you go, wow, what an egregious argument. And you would be right. You would 100% be right to call that without question. One of the more moronic takes in the history of all of college football takes. But a lot of people live in this 10 second society where we don't actually go and listen to the entire interview. It takes only 19 minutes because I went and sat down and listened to every word that was said. And I can be the first to tell you, it gets worse. It gets a thousand percent worse. Because then he brings up, well, what about Florida and Florida State? Now with the shot of going to the college football playoff and having big time brands get in their conversation, we should get rid of that rivalry. I'm sorry, what? What did you just say? You, you, you then also say in the middle of that entire conversation, I'm a college football fan. No, you're not. No, you're not. And you know what? I actually do believe that you are a fan of one team in college football, Colin Cowherd. I believe that it is USC. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that you grew up growing up on the West Coast, being able to be a part of a program and seeing the growth and the development underneath Pete Carroll. Then what happened during the rigorous times of the Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian era, a little bit of growth with Clay Helton. And then, of course, you have a great relationship with Lincoln Riley. That factors in. But that does not mean that you're a fan of college football. That's like me saying I'm a fan of the NBA because of I like the Rockets. No, I know the NBA. I pay attention to the NBA, but I'm not an egregiously over-enthusiastic fan of the NBA. That's you with college football. You know what you're a fan of? You're a fan of big brands being represented on your television screen because if you want your ratings to be better. Guys. We talk SEC football on this platform. You don't think it's good for our brand to see as many quality teams be represented every single year in the dozen dance, whether it be Georgia, Texas A&M, Texas Ole Miss, Florida, for that matter, when they're really good, Alabama, Auburn. You don't think those programs are going to do wonders for a channel like this? Oklahoma hasn't even officially joined the SEC, and yet they're one of our biggest supporters. By the way, Sooner fans everywhere, thank you so much for joining the channel. But you mean to tell me that also, seeing a program like a Kentucky that has always been known for basketball, but still consistent every three years, making it to the college football playoff, wouldn't be good for our business as an SEC channel? Wouldn't be good for our numbers, our ratings? We get it. We completely understand it. But you want to know what does really good for these games? Rivalries. 
big time rivalries. And some of these rivalries come from out of conference, Florida versus Florida State, South Carolina versus Clemson. How about a team like Georgia versus Georgia Tech? And you know what? At the end of the day, they don't always carry that same amount of animosity and weight when it comes to setting the standard for a college football playoff. No, it doesn't. But you know what it does do? It creates bragging rights. It creates hostility. It creates atmospheres that made you fall in love with the game when you were seven years old. There is something about a wonderful, crisp evening night on a November, right around Thanksgiving, where you know that you're going to sleep and waking up the next day hating the Yellow Jackets, hating the Tigers of Clemson, hating the Seminoles. Even when the game went away, you still remember the moments of the Aggies hating the Longhorns and what that meant to college football. Sure, does it no longer carry the weight of what was going to be a conference matchup like it does Alabama versus Auburn? Or if you want to throw in one, I don't know, like now Texas versus Oklahoma? Of course not. Does the Egg Bowl still have its hostile animosity that you'll see that comes with the game mattering to records and making it to Atlanta? Yes. But does that mean that rivalries aren't good for the sport? We fell for college football because of these type of matchups. And I don't mean to go back to bring up the Pac-12 or now the Big Ten, but Notre Dame and USC is one of the greatest matchups that we have ever been graced in college football. So much so that you'll have fans that don't care, that live out in Louisville, Kentucky, that live out in Bozeman, Montana, that live out in Oxford, Mississippi, turn on their television screen to see the fighting Irish and the Trojans go to war. Because of it's a great game. It's a game that made us enjoy college football. And you want to take those away because if you want to make it an easier path, if you're so good of a team, it shouldn't matter what the pathway to the playoffs are. What matters is that you still have those rich environments filled to the brim, whether it be out in Pasadena, California, or whether it be out in South Bend, Indiana, Tallahassee, Florida, or Gainesville, Columbia, or Clemson, Louisville, or Lexington. It doesn't matter. These are games that because of what means to the state, what it means to these fans, what it means to us as college football fanatics, you don't get rid of them ever, never. And you know what the crazy part is? We're going to eventually see where potentially divisions are completely gone in every single sport. Conferences are gone in every single sport. And we're going to finally just see the most random teams out there. You know what's going to happen when we have that, when that occurs? Because eventually the way that college football is going and why I think the system is so beyond broken that we need a commissioner before we actually see the ship sink and it joins the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean of despair is we need to see these games still come because eventually conferences go away and you're just going to have the best teams play the best teams. So the Iron Bowl goes away. So the Egg Bowl goes away. So now we're going to lose the matchup between Kentucky and Florida. I mean, Kentucky and um, Kentucky and Louisville. We're going to lose the greatest cocktail party every few years because of why. Now, wouldn't we? Uh, we're definitely going to lose what was a great matchup between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State that should be around. The Civil War no longer exists. And I know that I'm going brand here and I'm going big. But because if you just want to see the great matchups for great ratings, well, third Saturday in October, what if Tennessee is 7-5 and five and Alabama is still 9-3 and three or 10-2? and two? What happens if instead, how about Tennessee's on the rise and after years of waiting to finally be back at the brim in Knoxville, where they get to fill up Neyland Stadium with the wafting smell of smoke from cigars that have been sitting in the laundry basket for 15 plus years, and it may stink, but you've waited for this moment to arrive. Multiple times, year in and year out, like we saw in 2022. Oh, it doesn't do good for ratings. It doesn't do good for our show. It doesn't do good for us to talk about. So we're going to take it away. You want to know why everyone now says when you use the word, oh, everyone needs a podcast. Everyone needs to be on air. Because if people like you don't talk about the real games that truly matter. It's like whenever we have these big time conversations about where things reside in the world, it's like, you forget that Middle America is a big part of why we're able to function. You want to know what else is really big in Middle America? Rivalries in college football. Rivalries in basketball. It's not just about California, Florida, Texas. It's about places like Mississippi, like Alabama, like Kentucky, you know, where there's hard work going on year in and year out. And you want to take that away? You want to take that away because of what? It doesn't mean something to you. How dare you think that you're a college football fan and that's okay. 
And I know that I'm going to lose my mind here. And I know that it comes off like I am absolutely crazy. But the true college football fans feel the same way as me. And if you listen to the interview, it only gets worse. You know when you see somebody and they're digging their grave and you go, hey, you know what, maybe you should stop. And they go, no, I'm already three feet deep. Let's just keep digging. That's what the interview is. It's not one of those moments where you see a flash in the pan like Brian Kelly saying, oh, we're actually only looking to recruit certain type of players, not that we have the money. And then people run with that and they say, oh, no, they are not a rich program. LSU is one of the richest programs in college football. What are you talking about here? It's not like that. This is one where you continuously see bad take after bad take after bad take for the purists that actually enjoy this sport. So just case in point, if you don't get college football at its core, if you don't get it where it resides throughout the states of Tennessee, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina, even in places like Kansas, uh, Iowa, Michigan, real locations that are the true heartlands, the farm systems, and actually wake up on Saturday mornings with the intent to go ham in college football, maybe just sit this one out. Nobody goes ahead and crosses your line when you want to talk about the NBA if you're a college football fan. To college football fans, the true ones out there, maybe just do yourself a favor and go ahead and let uh, someone else talk. And better yet, maybe just don't talk at all. But let me know in the comment section down below. Am I losing my mind to think that rivalries like Notre Dame versus USC, Kentucky versus Louisville, Florida versus Florida State should not only exist – but should still be celebrated at a high end level the way that we care about it. Make sure that also you rate, review, comment, go to YouTube, go to go to uh, podcast forum, iTunes, Spotify, whatever. Leave a one star review if you hate this type of content, five star review if you type of, if you love this type of content, and make sure of course you hit subscribe because we're already past 10,000 subscribers. And for more information, for great content, visit secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Talk to you later, folks.